Hello everybody, uh, I'm doing another video. Uh, if you remember my last video if you watched it, uh, towards the end, I said I had to brainstorm uh, of a way to be able to try and save your paints if you mix them and you want, say, to take these two like I'm doing right now. And uh, let's say you decide you want to paint, let's go with the shoulder here first. And you want to just do this whole shoulder here, and then move down the arm, and then go to the head, and then move down the body, and continue on to this arm, and just, just do everything in sections, and move down all at one time with your highlighting and shadowing. But you don't want to just leave it in one of these regular palettes here, where it will just dry up. And that gives you the option. That gives you the other option of using a wet palette, where a lot of times when you take the wet palette and you rub to mix, the paper that's made of is fine if the paint is just sitting there and on it, and you're just dipping your brush in there to get the paint. I, I found that every time, no matter what papers I've used. Uh, cooking paper without wax, uh, Winsor Newton's paper, other stuff that I've gotten from Michael's. When I try to blend something together, take two colors and, and mix it on the paper, the paper always starts to tear up. So it's never been good. So my idea has been to go to... Uh, I went to... CC's Pizza, because I know they have them last time I took my kids there for my for a birthday party. And these are the little things that you get a kid's pri prize out of. They used to be a quarter, now it's 50 cents to a dollar to get one of these. And they got smaller ones the size of an acorn, but I don't think that would be anything you'd want to get. And I just got one of the regular circle wells here. But I'm thinking if you get an old egg carton, probably about the size of this here. It probably give you at least four or so cubbies, cubbies that a normal extra large egg would sit in, and it would sit in a lot better than this. But this will work. And so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna take. Uh, let's see. We're gonna figure out how many drops of water or how many drops of whatever fluid it is that you decide to put in here, at least will hold. So, just to get a little color in there, to get a little bit better of a view, we'll make purple. And I've got one of these large dropper bottles. I can say large, because it's much bigger than the air, as you can see. So right now we got two drops of inks into here. So that gives us three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. So at twenty, you're looking at not much in the grand scheme of the size of these. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So that's thirty, two, three, four, five, six, five, forty, fifty. All right, we're at half of a hundred drops of fluid. Still not even a dent in the in the thing itself. So, all right, that's more than fifteen. More than 50 drops, or that's more than 100 drops. 
I'm sorry. And as you can see, it's not much in the grand schemes. So let's go ahead and get this a stir. As you can see, I can, I'm stirring this pretty vigorously, making it clickety click, clickety click, clickety click, clickety click. It's not moving very much, not much to where it would spill. Clean off the end of my brush before I put that down. So we know this this is good. Now, I believe cause these have these lips that are set in here. I remember them being airtight when I was a child. Now I'll put the cap on. Let's give it a shake sideways. No fluids coming out. I can see it sitting right here on the edge where the top meets the bottom, but it's not getting past that. There's a little pocket here where it kind of sits. It's not coming out. Give it a shake upside down like this. All over the place. No fluid coming out. So, so I'll put it this way. Normal off right. Just give it a good shake, 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 shake. Just give it a cap down. Still dry as can be. So I'm going to stop this video here, and then when in a few seconds you'll we'll come back tomorrow morning, and um, we'll see if we have any uh, drying of the ink in here. So if I had more than 50 cents, I would have got more than one of these. So go ahead and try these out and see if these are going to be something that you can implement into your painting table to help keep paint that you mix up and add 100 drops of whatever you're doing. <laughs> you still have plenty of room. 100 drops is a lot of paint. Uh, it goes a very long way. I have, I have good faith. And my mental capability of this being a very good way to bypass using a wet palette, but yet keep your paint so that you can work on small sections, cap it, continue on the small section with another premix, and then come back to a different section of that model with that color that you've already mixed without having to remake it every time. So you can try to keep that model consistent in the shades that you apply. All right. I'll see you in just a second. All right, everybody. I'm hoping this thing's actually recording. So I found my old webcam. Uh, it's a Ghetto Tech um, Quick Pro 9000 films at the highest at 720 high def, and it says it does um what's that 16 by 9 widescreen so I'm trying it out uh, I can't get the scene to get the autofocus to kick in right uh, I'm going to hit click the button now for autofocus and it does that um, it might be just the background it might be trying to focus on some of the bottles in the back right hand corner I'm not sure because even if I take out the model it won't focus on the plastic cup but I can go in manually uh, I manually zoomed as well and right there and I can manually focus on to the container itself without any issues so if anybody out there knows anything that might help with it correctly focusing please let me know it might just be a matter of I need a back uh, a solid background uh, hopefully that's the case I have the face tracking off because if I don't, it will automatically zoom out and I can't zoom in for some reason. But the light seems good. I'm only using my desk light. I'm not using oh, the other light that I normally use. And there's that turned on. Really no need for it to be on. The camera's adding enough light to make it not worth my while. So let's get to this part of the video. As you saw last time, I had filled this up uh, with a hundred drops of, well, 
98 drops of water, pure water, and two drops, or one drop red, one drop blue to make a nice purple color. As you can see, there's no condensation. All the little droplets of water are actually the same droplets of water that were on the side last night after I had shaken it up and played around with it to see if it would leak. And there's no there's no fluid here that had dried overnight. Um, so I'm going to give this my seal of approval. There is no line uh, from where the ink itself had dried. As you can see, it's starting to pull away. Now let's actually have the light. Maybe it might make things slightly better. I guess not. No, it doesn't. But you can see that when I move this, it comes down. There's no ring of where it had dried onto the side. So I going to say this is a good way to mix up your paints. And then, like if you're going to do a large model, I don't have any large models like a bust or. Um, the largest model I have at the moment at the desk is, ooh, that's huge looking. Uh, back his ass up a little bit, zoom out just a smidge, and pan the camera down. Ooh, down. That, that's the biggest model I have, it's the Titan Gladiator at the moment, uh, well, other than a other than the, the Manoth Heavy Jack. So, if you were mixing up the colors to do his face, to try to drag more attention to his, his face, let's say he didn't have tusks, and you wanted his face to kind of be more, more of the focal to draw all your attention inwards towards the model instead of out and about, if you're doing it for show, and not trying to do a tabletop quality, trying to do higher than like I'm, let's say this was a, an extreme uh, comfy lump, I mean a uh, gladiator, Titan gladiator. So you were doing an extreme and you wanted it to look really nice. Uh, and you're going from, obviously these aren't the colors I use, but you're going from here to here or here to there, whichever way. Uh, you know, some people will have a base color that they put down like I did here. And then they'll just do a wash, and then they'll bring it up to the highlights. And I, I did, you know, straight exile blue, and then three drops of that, and then one drop of the, sh um, yeah, shadow gray, and then 50-50, and then uh, three drops of shadow gray, two exile blue, and then it'll be straight shadow. It's the way I'm going, but some people will actually do more than that for just the highlights they'll have more percentage difference as they gradually go up and that's fine it's a matter of how close you want the person to be able to see before they can see that um, I guess it's the resolution of the paint job and then you get people who will take the base color as well and add let's say um, say smoky ink to it um, for a shadow and then they'll paint in the shadow and they might do the same thing but in, in opposite with the shadow that they did with the highlight and if you're doing a, a large model like this like that you're doing his face first but you still have all this you know the hands and the, all the arms and the chest and the back all there to, to still do. I mean, why do all that mixing and then allow that paint to dry in a, in a palette when you could easily just cap it and then come back to it later? And if you wanted, you could do an arm, then the next arm, and the back flank. I'd probably do the back flank and then the arms <clears throat> so I could match it up better. And then do the other side, and then start on his legs, you know, and then come in, start on the hands.
and do them individually piece by piece so you don't have to remember what did I do on this part, did I get this part, did I miss this part, oh, you know. Because <clears throat> if you're going subtle enough and the paint change from one color to the other, it can be very hard, especially <clears throat> especially when you go from the, the base here to your highlight color. Um, the first two highlights up, uh, you know, the one part to three and or the three to one and the fifty fifty can pretty can be pretty close, can be pretty, pretty subtle, um, depending on how dark the base coat color is, and it can be hard to tell if you if you if you had painted there, and obviously you don't want to. <clears throat> miss some place because it, it will mess up the resolution of your paint job so I really hope that this video <clears throat> I, I've never seen anybody suggest doing this so let me say that first <clears throat> if somebody already out there has showed something with this as a way to do it or or something you know, I, I don't plan. I'm not trying to take credit for it. <clears throat> I just this is something that just popped in my head as a way to prevent me from. If, if you look in here, you can see some of the color changes in here from having to mix colors up for my highlighting and then have it just dry out. And that that has been one reason why I have <clears throat> have not painted quite so much is I didn't have time to sit there and mix up some paint and go through all that paint before I had to leave to go to the work or go get my kids or go do this or go do that so for me this is going to be something that empowers me to be able to get more painting done because for 50 cents I got this at CC's and if I had more quarters I would have got more you know, and the little toy that comes in it, if there's a kid there when you're getting it, give him the toy, you know, who cares? If you got your own kid, give the kid a toy, you know. Uh, wait until they've done something good at school, you know, read a book or, or, or something. And reward them with a little, you know, a little gaudy toy. This had like something that looked like lips and it had a little cord and it had a ring that goes around it. It goes on your finger and you smack it on paper and it brings the paper to you or you just, you know, if you want to be a little bastard of a kid. And you get the popcorn ceilings and a vaulted ceiling, and you don't like the person, you throw it up on the ceiling, and it sticks there, and it drives the person freaking crazy forever, trying to figure out how to get that damn thing down. But uh, try this out, and let me know how it works out for you. Um, please leave comments about you know this idea, uh, your thoughts, your feelings on it. If you tried it, if you liked it, if you tried it, if you didn't like it, why, why not? I appreciate it if you did. So everybody, thanks for putting up with me messing around with this uh, with this webcam. Let me know what you think about using the webcam instead of the cameras that I've been using. Is it going to be something that I can sit a model in front of? <coughs> Sorry. Is this going to be something I can sit a model in front of and do you not mind if I zoom in, tilt, and then adjust focus accordingly to get the, the correct focus on the miniatures so that you can see them better. Please let me know. You know, I had been debating about trying to get a, a more a better a better camera because I couldn't figure out where this had run off to, and I wanted to see what kind of quality it could could give me to my videos and adding this light just is behind it so it doesn't do any good I, I'll have to that'll, that'll work when I set this up to where the, the model is back that way and facing this way um, so yeah I'll, I'll be able to get more light on this model uh, if I shoot this at a different angle, actually, I can do a quick demonstration. Uh, boom, put that there. Put this here. Sorry, it's going to be shaky cam. 
So even right there, that's, that looks a lot better from what I can see personally. I turn on my big light with the magnifying glass, and it adds some more light. Uh, I think I like the look of it. I think it looks a lot better. It shows off uh, my shadow and my highlight buildup. Uh, yeah, it might not be perfect. It might not be great since this is only a, a 2.0 megapixel. But uh, it, it's looking good, uh, and if I don't have to spend money on another camera for a good long while, then uh, I think I might just keep this out. So please post, comment, suggest, um, like the video if you like it, you know, subscribe. Inputs, any input is always good input unless you're being a douchebag, and then just keep it to yourself. Thank you, everybody, and have a good day.